we are more than eight months into the pandemic now on this Thanksgiving. Some may be expanding their bubble and spending time with family and friends despite the warnings. To talk more about that, we're joined by Dr. John Brownstein, digital epidemiologist and chief innovation officer at Boston Children's Hospital. Thank you so much for taking some time out to speak with us today on this Thanksgiving. Um, Dr. Brownstein, if someone did celebrate today with people they're not typically seeing, should they get a COVID test in the next couple of days? And if so, how soon and which kind? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. And thanks for having me on. I mean, the truth is everyone's so hyper-focused on testing, but really the recommendation is quarantine, right? The CDC recommends 14 days of quarantine if potentially you've been exposed. And of course, now that we've all been traveling possibly, the idea is that one should be in quarantine for two weeks, maybe seven days plus a test. We have to remember that the incubation of this virus means that it can take days before you get a positive test. So a few days after Thanksgiving still may not generate a test, even if you're infected. Uh, the test that we recommend is the PCR still. It's still the gold standard, although we're seeing the antigen tests are working pretty well. But again, you know, not a test doesn't necessarily clear, clear you from being infected. On top of that, huge volume of tests being done across this country, long wait times. If you have to wait for a few days to get a test result, it basically becomes useless really at the end of the day. Are you and your colleagues preparing for another surge locally in the coming days? And what do those preparations look like? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. The state and the hospitals are all working together, meeting weekly to think about what a surge is gonna look like. Clearly there's a concern about, you know, hospitalizations increasing. So we're modeling forecasting to think about capacity. Um, and right now we're about 29% availability of beds. If we start hitting 25% for consecutive of five days, that's when we start to go into the next tiers of surge planning. And that's potentially when elective procedures start to get canceled. And that's a real concern because that becomes the secondary impact of this pandemic you know, the other types of health impacts because people don't have access to care. Dr. Brownstein, in the recent vaccine trials, the participants have been adults and teenagers. Only Pfizer has involved children as young as 12, but the FDA says it may start adding younger children to the trials. Now, does that mean if a vaccine were available in the next few weeks, it could not be used on children? Right, that's exactly true. So we have to remember, you know, child's immune system is very different than adults, and it's constantly evolving over time. And this is why it's so important to do clinical trials specifically on kids. And yes, Pfizer has now started to add kids into the mix, but it's going to be months before we have that data and we can interpret it and understand safety and efficacy in our kids. And that's going to place more burden on the older population to get immunized if we're ever going to get to herd immunity because kids are not going to be immunized in this first wave, unfortunately. Dr. John Brownstein, thank you so much for giving us a few minutes of your time today to deliver this important information. Thank you so much. Thank you.